Hello everyone, welcome back to Storky Farmstead. So I am in Lahaina, the burn area. As you can see, all the area behind me is burnt. And if you look right here, you'll see that we are at the Kula Estate for the Chocolate Factory. Transition because ultimately they have to move out of the hotel, right? Oh, yeah. It's not a place they can cook. It's not a long term. You know, that's right. Free food all the time for them to feed them. So that's not a long term solution. And uh, slowly the Red Cross is moving them out from the right. housing yeah. program. The yeah. housing was already tight. Yes, now, yes. Land, yes. We, went, we went and donated some time. Mm -hmm. And we didn't do, get to do much, but we were working with a, a guy that does um, tiny homes. Tiny homesteads right down the road. Right down the road. Yeah. But we wouldn't help with that. Uh, we didn't, like I said, we didn't do no housework. He said, we got over there, we did a fence. We had yeah. a local fence because the cops were literally chasing somebody that was running through the mountain. Yeah. So they said, let's go ahead and get the fence built. So that's what we started working on. Okay, good. Well, good for you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I did mulching. I mulched. But um, my question, food. yeah, <laughs> my, my question for you be, have you seen a reduction in your business and your, oh, yeah. your profits, your tours, obviously? Oh, no, we're, not, we're not making money right now. We're losing money. You're losing money. Because, because you know, the, the number of people on the west side is really small. I mean, already the number of people typically come to Maui at this time of year is six to 7,000 a day, right? And now it's down to four. And most of them are going to South Maui. That's right. right? Because not, they were not affected at all. Yet, That's right. right? Mm -hmm. So West Maui has got not that many people staying here that are that are actually guests at the hotel. We have a lot of displaced people, but they're not buying chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> they don't have any money. They don't have any money. <laughs> That's correct. That's correct. Right. So if so a little um, tough right now. Yeah. So the people that you had working for you prior to the fire, were they able to come back, or would, did y'all yeah, have to have do like three people? Well, five people have lost their residences. Two of them own their homes. The others were renting. Right, so they're all in temporary places. With two of the two people that lost their homes, they have to come back to work. And they need they need work. Right? That's right. That's right. That's what we do in South Louisiana. Yeah. yeah so we work while we while we're stressing. That yeah, we're, where well, we're going to live, what we're going to eat. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, you, you know, you, you have to live. You have to survive. Can't take care of everything. For you, no, right? that's what we say. You've got to. You got to get on your feet. Yeah. Um, would you, is there anything that you could think of that people, because I have a, a YouTube platform that's, we fundraise to come. They pay for it for us to bring finances into Maui. It's my second trip in two months. What can they do to help you, to help your community? Um, well, we, there's a lot of, uh, Maui Strong is the number one fund that people are donating to, and they've collected about $130 million. And they distribute it to nonprofits. They themselves are a nonprofit, but they're like a, you know, uh -huh, umbrella, yeah. you know, and the, all those other nonprofits are getting grants. That's probably the single best place to donate is Maui Strong. Are they? But they are helping the people with that oh, money. Yeah, then. No, good. Definitely. That's they're, all I needed to hear. Out, good. Right. Um, and the nonprofits then that get the money, they're the ones that are actually doing the work on the ground. That's right. Yeah. Right? Boots on the boots on the yeah. ground. Yeah, so well, that's we appreciate. How it's uh, there are other, obviously, Red Cross, you know, the FEMA people. They're all here. Um, they're all doing things, but the main source of money is the Maui Strong Fund. Yeah. So if you want to give money, that's probably the best. Place that's the place. Okay. Sure. Uh, oh wow. And make sure he's okay with your video. You mind if I video? Oh uh, no, I don't have any problems. Uh, head of sales and marketing. What else do I do? Crazy <laughs> uh, <laughs> master of none. Uh, yeah. That's me. Well, I, I I think I'm master of some of them. How long have you been doing this job? Uh, well, I started the company technically in 2018, but uh, the farm, which is about a, a mile and a half away, we started in 2013. So I've been at it about 10 years. Wow. Uh, but as far as the factory is concerned, it didn't open until uh, October 2019. Okay. So that's, uh, we've been making chocolate now for four years. What did I do the year before that? to the Maui power grid so when the fire happened you know the power was out for many days yeah. so it's still out in some places in Lahaina oh, yeah. I can imagine. yeah but around around this area it was out for probably a week and during that time we were never out of power that's amazing because, uh, that's all solar panels above the parking lot okay. 900 solar panels and uh, that runs the factory it's running the factory right now 
Uh, that's an inverter uh, cage, so that's converting the DC voltage to AC so we can use it. And then the excess energy is used to charge the batteries. Those are Tesla batteries, the big white rectangles. Um, and uh, those are their commercial batteries. They call them power packs. Maybe familiar with the power wall, yes. which is the home, home version, right? That's a, a little bit bigger. <laughs> right? We've got five of them lined up in series. Wow. So uh, we've got stores enough energy to run the factory overnight. In fact, only about 50% of the energy is actually used to run the factory overnight. Then the next day, um, when the sun comes up, that takes over again, charges the batteries again, and at the same time, it's also running the factory. So we never lose power. If it's, if it's raining for a couple of days yeah. uh, and there's not enough solar, we have a decent generator that kicks in to charge the batteries. Right? But that happens only in the wintertime and only when we have like a two or three day rainy period. Yeah. The rest of the time, the sun is doing the whole thing, just alternating back and That's forth. That's amazing. Charging. So like us at home, it really wouldn't do us much good during the winter at all because we get so much rain, yeah. so much cloud coverage. Behind it doesn't get much rain. Yeah, and I can't yeah. get a pole stick enough further up higher than the clouds. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we yeah. would be wasting, <laughs> wasting our breath. I like yeah, that. I couldn't yeah. get a pole stuck so up high enough. I'm going to give you some hairnets. Uh, it's a FDA uh, regulated manufacturing, food manufacturing facility. Yes, sir. Uh, you don't have to wear a hairnet. You can just wear your cap. Oh, yeah. Wow, yeah. you're so ladies, lucky. Ladies will have to wear hairnets. Uh, of I'll course. Come on in and I'll get those. Packaged up. We don't ship on Fridays because, you know, we can't get it too That's bad. Right. Uh, so Monday, Monday through Thursday are shipping days. So what's the furthest you have shipped to? Oh, around the world. Yeah. Okay. We go anywhere, but you know, if, in the United States, we have good rates with FedEx. To go outside of that, Canada is pretty good, but then the rest of the world is sort of it looks expensive. steep, yeah. Yeah, so they have to pay. The, the, oh, yeah. the user has to pay, or the, the buyer has to pay any shipping, unless it's to the U.S. mainland. And to U.S. mainland, if you, we have different rates, but mm -hmm. we, shipping is free if you buy over a hundred dollars. Okay. Right. So that that rate that applies across everything. We pay the shipping. You get not. You don't have to pay the shipping as long as you buy more. It's a perfect only, time to order for uh, the holidays. Yes, it is. The reason I'm asking you that is because like she does a little. We we do a little form stand at home. Yeah. And when people come to our place, if I ordered enough chocolate, so when they get there, because she does um, tours. they they do took she does the tours, but then sometimes she does like a um. A, what do you call it? A, a brunch? brunch. A, a yeah. farm brunch. Yeah. And the chocolates. So I wanted to make sure we try to get y'all's address or whatever. Well, we yeah, no, get, well, you can do that in the retail yeah. store. As a matter of fact, all we have to yeah. do is call. We just have to give them yeah, our yeah. address. Yeah, you can go on containers out in the, under the solar array. Uh, we only bring in here what's going to be used in the short term, right? And then we need to acclimatize it because it's 90 degrees out there. And you don't want to start roasting at an elevated temperature. Correct for a variable temperature, you want it always to be the same. So it's about 70 in here. Yes. Bring them in, cool them down, get them ready for the roaster. The way we transfer them into the roaster is we use a vacuum system, that's a vacuum. That is so cool. Yeah, it's not on right now, but when, we, when we're when we transferring beans, we just load the, the bag of beans in that bin, check it to make sure there's like no loose debris, and then start vacuuming it into the roaster, which is in the next room. And we'll see that in just a minute. But I wanted to show you one thing that uh, Dan, who is our guru of cacao, and by the way, cacao and cocoa, they're the same thing. So if we're talking about cocoa, and I change the, the word and I say cacao, I didn't change the subject. It's the same oh, thing. I love it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm tightening this down just to hold the beans in place. Dan uses this as we call it a guillotine for obvious reasons. <laughs> um, I love it. Let me get the right end. It's only goes in one way. And we just slide this down and we cut the beans in half. And the reason for doing that is, is this is for uh, to evaluate them, right? This isn't something we do on the whole bag of beans. We don't just do a few. Yeah, it's a, it's a test, quality control test, if you want to call it that. And Dan, who's an expert in cacao, um, he knows what to look for. So what he does is he looks for 
color and he also looks for what we call fissuring which is the cracks and the way it's cracked because what happens with cacao it's fermented on the farm. You said you had a farm right? Yes sir. What do you grow? All right yeah so we do vegetables some fruits but we also um, integrate livestock and cover crops and okay. Fantastic. Biochar, all that good stuff. So we're regenerative in a state that loves chemicals. So oh. we're an oddity. Well, thanks, thanks for doing that. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, thank <laughs> you. The state doesn't. Right. Uh, so uh, yeah, so this fissuring, the color, all of these things have relevance to somebody that has a level of experience with looking at this. So Dan grades the beans. He decides how to blend them based upon the bag to bag variation. Okay. And then we blend them all so that from one bag to another, they're the same, right? And, but he's the expert at this. Uh, these are dried, uh, but they're not totally dry. They have about 5% water content in them, so they're stable. You can actually store them for years, and they don't change uh, flavor over that course of time. When you said they were fermented. Fermented, that happens on the farm. So cacao, uh, when you break open a pot of cacao, you'll see this upstairs when you watch the video. It'll be, uh, it'll be a continuous loop okay. of video uh, captioned, so you don't have to hear right, it right, right. while you're enjoying your tasting samples. Uh, so you'll see the, that process. And um, what happens is that when you crack the pod, there's a white fruit pulp that surrounds the seeds, the, the beans. And you just take all of that, you put it into a box, and uh, there's natural yeast around in the environment. Mm -hmm. So that white fruit pulp has got a lot of sugar in it, and the yeast that's their food, right? That's right. So they start uh, fermenting that and converting it to alcohol. And then a uh, secondary step is that bacteria convert the alcohol to right. vinegar. Yes, you know okay, this, right? yeah, yeah, because I, I do all this at home. All yeah. right, so you know what fermentation is. But that the reason you do that in, in uh, chocolate making is because that's how the fla fine flavors are developed. Okay. If you just take a raw bean, you do not ferment it, it'll be very bitter. Oh, and yeah. The chocolate will be very bitter. Okay. Right, so poorly fermented chocolate is not a, a poorly fermented cacao is not a good thing, not good for the final product. Right. Right, so you have to do that step well. Dan happens to be a world expert at it. We've actually won an international award of excellence wow. for our cacao, but the beans itself, not just the chocolate. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an international panel that judges cacao from across the world. Now, is that the cacao that's grown here on yeah, Maui? Grown here. We How much a, do you have to import also to keep up with your sales? We have uh, another a main farm that we import from is in Ecuador. This is a bag from there. It's called Costa Esmeraldas. And the good thing about this is that Dan is their uh, consultant. Awesome. And, and he has been for 12 years. So he actually controls what goes on down at that That's farm. amazing. Okay. And uh, he goes there twice a year. And one of those times during the harvest season, make sure they're doing everything right. And then he grades the, the lots, just like I'm telling you about now. He grades the lots, he determines how they're blended. Guess who gets the best blends? You do. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you love that? I Go love that. <laughs> well, I love it because I don't own that farm, but I control right. that farm. Amen, amen, Revamp, yeah, right? yeah, it's right. A lot better than owning it, actually. You know, we own a farm. Do we get to meet Dan? Because day. Dan sounds like the king of chocolate. Well, he's working at home right now oh, today. He's Dan. in the office day. He's the king of cacao, no doubt. Of oh, cacao, that's right. But, and, and he has a lot to do with the factory and the equipment, but mostly I'm I'm in charge of the factory. Yes, He's yes. in charge of the farm. Like that, the shell will crack. Oh, yeah, you do. Bean, uh, this bean is not a Maui bean, but what we're tasting now are the Maui nibs. They have a very fruity uh, acidity to them. But the other thing I want you to notice is that why doesn't this taste really strong? Like, you know, it is very mild, I noticed it's very that. Mild. Very and mild. Very mild. The reason that you don't get the full flavor is your mouth isn't a very good grinder, grinder for Right. And uh, the flavor of the cow is only released when it's when it's milled down to really tiny particles on the order of uh, 15 microns, which is a quarter of the width of a human hair. Mm. These are, your mouth can't do that. It's just not possible. Wow. Right? So you can't, yeah, but well, you can't release <laughs> the full flavor, right? So what we do it in the next step, which I'll show you in a minute, is we take it down to that very fine particle size, and then it becomes uh, very, the flavor becomes very accessible. So take, take one of those three, here, one of those, yeah. Now this is 100% cacao, but this is uh, made into a 
chocolate. Thank you. Perfect kit. It has no sugar in it. So it is what you just tasted, but with no sugar wow. added. And it's milled, so you're getting the full flavor experience out of it. Right? It's a lot more intense than what you just wow. tasted. Wow. It's very, mil very milky. Is that the right word? No. No, creamy. No, sorry, no. It. It's creamy. no, it's very nutty. Yeah, the milkiness or the creaminess you're tasting is the cacao itself melting. Mm, okay. The butter, right? So oh. half, half of this, half of what you see in here is cocoa butter and half of it is cocoa solids. The solids are where the flavor is. The butter is just the fat that melts in your mouth. So mm. when chocolate melts in your mouth, it's the cocoa butter that's melting. And it's releasing those tiny particles and they are disintegrating, and that's what you taste, right? And in dark chocolate, there's only two particles. There's sugar, and there's the cacao solids, and the rest is cocoa butter. So it's only three, really three ingredients in dark chocolate if it's made the way we make it. Uh, cocoa butter, the, the, the cacao solids, and sugar. And there, those two uh, ingredients, sugar and cacao, are milled down to this very fine particle size. So the flavor is immediately released as soon as it melts. Right, so the way the way chocolate melts in your mouth actually matters because that's how the particles are released. Right, so if you want to taste, if you want to eat frozen chocolate, that's that's your choice, mm -hmm. right? But yeah. it's going to taste different because of the way it melts from what if you were to have it at room temperature and pop it in, it'll melt a lot faster. You get a, a faster release of flavor compared to uh, a frozen. Right? And it's, you know, it's a matter of preference. It's like, you like to eat it that way? I'm not too into the DAL, L, and you'll see why. They have stainless steel ball bearings. Go ahead and take a look in. They have stainless steel ball bearings. They have to be coated in chocolate right now. So I can see that. That's yeah. very interesting. Right, but those are stainless steel ball bearings. And when it's operating, they're <gasps> rotating at the Wow, so that's amazing. They're little chocolate balls. Yeah, they're stainless steel. They're I know. Like they're smaller and smaller particles. Right? And let's, uh, I'll just skip one step and we'll get back to it. So in this machine, this is the point where we melt the cocoa butter. So this machine operates at uh, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. The cocoa butter is completely melted. It's a liquid when we process it because it's half cocoa butter, right? So that's the liquid. And the solids are what we're getting the particle size down, milling them to finer and finer particle size. So that's what happens. It takes an hour to mill it to get it to the consistency that you just tasted. Right. Right? And then we add sugar in a second mm -hmm. step. Right? So sugar is also milled down to the same fine particle size, but in a second step. The whole process takes about four hours, and then we transfer it into the next room. But once this is done, it's basically finished chocolate. Right? You, it, you could eat it. It tastes, right. it tastes like finished chocolate. It's not completely processed, though, and I'll tell you what happens uh, in the next room get there to this product. But you're going to taste it as it comes out of the machine now because I have okay. some samples. Awesome. So those nibs that you tasted, right. they have to be crushed before they go into that mill because yes. they're too, the pieces are too big. It would take forever to break it down. Yeah, it would. So that's what this machine does. We break it oh. down. Wow. And this is the second phase of the, of the breakdown. So I'm going to wrap this run until this is depleted because this is the last. <laughs> this is coming out. So we have two like flat wheels running up opposing each other and the gap is very narrow. So like it starts to fall through there and just gets crushed. Yeah, one set up here and one set down there that's set to the smaller gap, right? And that's what that's what's coming out right now. Oh pretty good. Oh it does. Yeah, I'm just gonna move it around and it piles up. It's hard to reach Fahrenheit, so when we pump the chocolate from that room in that machine into here, it stays liquid, right? And then this machine is also heated, right, to keep the chocolate melted. And if you look in here, you see this is about fast 2,000 RPM, really fast. And wow. It it's very fast with the viscosity, it makes it easier to mold, and it also improves the mouthfeel, so it melts really smoothly. So basically that's like I was a hand mixture, but a way finer. Yeah. It will find it, make it so much finer. Fine a mixture with them little hand mixtures that you got the little paddles on it. Yeah. It mixes it up, makes it fine. Yeah. But that one there is so much faster, way faster than a hand. Plus, it's gonna, we do this for 24 hours. So. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> so so you're fluffing it. Yeah, basically, time. you're fluffing it. 
And he called it, he talked about aggregates in the chocolate. Yeah. So I told him he's tilling his chocolate. Yeah, see, the most important part, thing about this machine is that is it, it blows those aggregates yeah. apart. And that's why it, we want, you, our finished chocolate doesn't have that granularity. That that's right, just yeah. Because it, it, of this machine. Mostly. Wow. Okay. I got it around yeah. my neck. <laughs> I will not, I don't get that close because I don't want to drop it in there. Yeah, so that just melted. That came from that tank. It feeds, it feeds this, this uh, machine. Excuse me, Gunnar, how does it get from that tank to this tank? Oh, we had to roll this over there yeah. and put it under there and pump it in. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's yeah it's got wheels on it. You okay. see the glove on the oh, end right there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we just roll it over there. Okay. Uh, and this machine is not hooked up to this machine, so it feeds on demand, it feeds chocolate. So we got a sensor. Right now, the Look at the chocolate pouring. pouring. Right now, the sensor's up because we've disconnected that machine from this one, so it's not going to feed any chocolate. And we've already flavored this. This is a flavor we call uh, OMG, Orange Mango Guava. Uh, and it's dark milk chocolate. And so they're going to mold this. Um, they haven't started cooling it uh, because they're in their wrapping uh, bars. But, but once we have Triglycerides are the only fat in, in, in chocolate. And they look, they're a molecule that has three long fatty acid chains. And when it's melted, they're just flopping around. Yeah. But as you start cooling it, they want to find a state of lower energy. And they start to interlace and create ladders and crystals. And that's what tempering chocolate is. It's creating a particular crystal structure. And that's very stable. And actually, you can think of a piece of chocolate as a uniform crystal of cocoa butter. With those particles, cacao and sugar particles, just suspended in it. That's right. Right? But the thing that melts in your mouth is the cocoa butter. The, the particles, they just disintegrate. They don't actually melt. They right. just disintegrate when they're that small. So this is being recirculated. As soon as it starts cooling it, you'll get to a point. This is at 40, uh, 44.6 degrees. That's centigrade. So that's about 118 Fahrenheit. So it stays melted. But as we cool it, we'll cool it to 30 degrees. Fahrenheit. And that's your skin tone. So this is a bar mold, and what they're doing in the room back there is the wrapping bars. So you might see some of that when we walk in there. Wait, you gotta, you all have that hand wrap every bar y'all do? Uh, no, there's, we have a, what's called a full wrapper. You'll see it in, uh, in work. <laughs> that just made me start sweating thinking about that much work. See, <laughs> uh, yeah, this is all air. The only place where it's actually connected to the mold is this little dark spot. And that's just, that just to leave a slight, uh, slight mark on the chocolate. On the chocolate. Really so this is a 40 year old design on a smaller version on how they individually wrap chocolate. You notice right here, there's a piece that you might make it out, you guys. Tie, rod, tie rods and cam shafts. That's all this is. It can wrap 90 individual pieces of chocolate a minute. That's amazing. And there's where the uh, you know, the foil would go. And this is how you wrap chocolate. Formed around the bar, right? And the seal underneath, underneath that, you can't see the seal mechanism. But at the bottom, the, the central seam, the seal. I'll put one in there in here. Let me just show you one. So this seal right here, that happens underneath, you can't see it. And then at the end, it's cut off and sealed uh, at the end and then drops down. That's how we got it. That's very interesting. Oh, yeah, four pack. Yeah, it's so that's what the white on chocolate yeah, is. Not hurt I always throw it away because I thought it was like a meal do or something. No, no, no. It's, it's no, just, but it is older chocolate. It's older and it'll feel, it'll melt more. It's a higher melting point, so it feels drier. Yes, you know, yeah, when, when yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about, yeah. Uh, so, you know, technically it's not as good as the one it was made, right? So we call that a best buy date. 
go beyond that date, then you're going to have that period. The machine back here where you were showing us where the rivers, it looked like little, like little um, rows of bark coming out. That's almost what it looks like it would taste like when chocolate gets old. Is that same yeah, texture? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's what came that, out. Yes. How right much? there. Uh, well, it's uh, 10 kilograms times 250. It's uh, $2,500. <gasps> that one tray, you guys, yeah, $2,500. Yeah. If it's wow. molded. Yeah. Okay. We don't sell it like this. <laughs> right, mold right. It and, and put it in bars. That's gold, things. baby. That's gold. It's, go it's the gold of chocolate, <laughs> yeah, chocolate we're looking at. It's sort of like gold. It's, you know. <laughs> it's it's so, worth more than actual money right now. You can actually eat this. Yeah. So that this is all um, untempered chocolate. It has wow. to be melted and uh, go through that molding process in order to get the final product, right? So um, we have hold a lot of it like that. And then on this side is mostly finished. This is also, these are remnants from a molding run. So we have remelt those. We don't waste them. Yeah. Right? Zero waste, that's right. We remelt them into the next run. Um, and we make about 25 different chocolates right now. So we got a lot of, you know, different SKUs, codes, right? Um, but what's in these bins, like I said earlier, uh, even out there, is that it's finished wrapped chocolate. Uh, this is dark chocolate over here. This is the main thing we store in this. In finished form, this is the main thing we store. The dark green labels are the dark chocolate. Um, so all this is dark finished. And then the, the cardboard boxes here, they all have the mold. They have, they have the bars, like you saw it there, they were wrapping. Right? So these are the wrapped bars just like you saw out there. Right? Wow. So we don't put them in final packaging until, uh, you know, we need to replenish the finished goods. What temperature are we in right now? About 70? 64. 64. 64. I knew it was a little nipply. Yeah, 64 in here. It's perfect. Which is perfect because it's cool enough it'll extend the shelf life of the dark chocolate. We want on with 65 right there. Yeah. Well, that, that's, like this is the chocolate ball. There's a million dollars worth of so chocolate in here. What we do is we store the chocolate um, that is not molded in uh, sort of big blocks. So this is an untempered, untempered what? chocolate, right? This is about 20. So at the end of the so tour, you get to sample all these chocolates. And they give you a place to write down how you feel about each chocolate. Look, she's doing smiley faces. I'm writing. I do hard. Yeah, and then on top of that, we each get to pick four different types of chocolate to share and try, which helps you guys when you go downstairs to order when you leave so you know what you liked and what you did not. And they give you a $25. Great idea. Gift card at the end of your tour. So make sure you come through the tour.